Miss Jerry in the building. How are you today? I'm well. I'm well. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. I appreciate you coming on and everything. So, Miss Jerry, uh, let's start with your story, man. We'd love to hear how you got started in trucking and how's the journey been so far. Wow, wow. So the journey's been amazing. Um, I've been in the transportation industry um, overall for over 25 years. Mm. Um, The majority of that um, time frame has been in um, a little over, a little less than 20 of those years, has been in private aviation. Mm -hmm. So a lot of regulations, compliance. Um, I ran an operations team of over... 50 people at a company called Universal Weather and Aviation, and uh, our team obtained, you know, permits to overfly different countries for governments, heads of state, anybody who had their own aircraft. That's what uh, our team did. Uh, otherwise, if they didn't get those permits, our clients would be shot down from the sky. Mm-hmm. So um, that was kind of what I did. And in 2017. Um, I decided to retire at 40, and um, that was due to, you know, it was, as you can imagine, in that line of work, it was very stressful and high-stress environment. Right. Um, I was, you know, 24-7 uh, working with the team and stuff like that, and so I missed a lot of family time um, as far as holidays and, you know, the whole the whole nine. When you're 24-7, you got to be there, and mm-hmm. so I missed birthdays and holidays and things like that, so I retired, and um, 2017 and decided to, I had no plan, no plan, no, no, um, transition, no backup. And so I just decided to work at my husband's. We have a nonprofit, a basketball youth basketball program in Houston, Texas. And so I decided to do that. And, um, that's where I met my friend, uh, Camille, who, who introduced me to the trucking industry. Okay. Okay. That's what's up. So let's, let's talk a little bit about, uh, uh, the, 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 the airplane, the aeronautics, the <laughs> FFA, am I pronouncing that right? FFA or yeah. The FAA. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah, FAA. About, so you've been, so you've been in that industry for 20, for 20 plus years. Did, did, did you actually went to go and get your pilot's license or you just worked behind the scenes? It was all behind the scenes work. Um, I never had the desire to um, go out and get my license, but um, from 18, 18 up until 40, jet fuel was just something that I, I love to smell jet fuel, and I always wanted to be around it uh, in some form of fashion. And um, no, I, I just, that whole industry was intriguing to me, and um, I just, Jumped in head first, entry level, and wow. just kind of worked my way up to senior leadership. I was I was um on track, CEO track before I left. Okay, okay, awesome, awesome. So, is let me ask you this: Is there any parallels between the trucking industry and uh and and the aviation industry? Yes, yes, it's very it's very aligned. Um, you know, they're they're both managed by the Department of Transportation, Um, even though it's two different entities, the FMCSA and the the FAA. But um, it is very aligned with regards to regulations, um, things of that nature. And I tell a lot of drivers a lot of times, you are under the same guidelines as pilots that fly fly the aircraft. Mm. And so, uh, again, from a compliance perspective, from a regulations perspective, they're very, very much aligned. So it was an easy transition for me as well. Okay, okay. So, like, when pilots go out there to get their, you know, pilot's license, I know that I know it's got to be a little bit more, you know, a little bit more tight-knit now, especially after yes. after 9-11. Uh, I'm, I'm, sure yes. getting, I'm sure getting a pilot's license is much more difficult than, than getting a, oh, a, yes. a, a, oh, yes. a CDL. Yes. Oh, yes. Much, much, uh, much uh, different. The um, the injury is for from a pilot to a driver is um, is, is very different. There's no uh, comparison to that. Mm-hmm. But the uh, 
the way they're managed and regulations. I mean, for the example, um, you know, there's a certain amount of time that you can have alcohol before you get in a truck versus getting in an airplane. It's the same, you know, it's the same concept. Like, you know, um, since you mentioned alcohol, one of my favorite movies is Flight with my man Denzel Washington. And uh, mm-hmm. he was, of course, you know, he was a pilot. Um, yeah. Had a, had a problem with alcohol and everything. They tried to say that the issue that, you know, that caused the, car- that caused the crash was you know his error but come to find out at the end of the movie it was a mechanical error but the mm-hmm. way he the way he handled it handle you know trying to land the plane safely which there was no way possible that that accident would could have been avoided anyway so mm-hmm. uh you know he um he you know he did the damn thing and couple of people perished and you know, but but he saved a lot of people uh too um but right. the, but the pilots though you know as you said about alcohol um they, they they can drink they just they just have to like what wait a day or two before they can get behind the seat of the aircraft no, usually it depends on, um, I think the SAA requires eight hours, eight to 12 hours. Most airlines require uh, 12 hours. Okay, okay, okay. So, And then, of course, if you test it, they look at the blood, blood alcohol, just like in trucking. You know, they're looking at your blood alcohol concentration. Exactly, exactly. All right, so it is, like, for us truckers, we, you know, can only drive – uh, certain amount, something, certain number of hours of the day, is that the Correct. same for the pilots as well? Yes, there is a certain amount of uh, of hours of service that they can that they can fly before they are out of out of hours. Yeah, it's, it's very similar. Uh-huh. Not not the same, but it, it is it is similar. So yeah, you're both aligned. You know, you're both um, you know uh, bound by the kind of the similar similar rules and, and regulations across the two industries okay okay that's what's up that's what's up so you spent uh you spent the better part of your life 20 20 plus years and you actually like you actually retired retired or is it like you retired and you still gotta wait until you 65 to collect on it or are oh you yeah able to i collect retired on it now no i'm not able to collect i retired mentally and physically, not finan- <laughs> not financially, <laughs> not financially. <laughs> okay, okay. But that would have been wonderful, though. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, when you re- when you when you left uh, when you when you left the industry, was there was there any blowback in trying to get try to try to get you back or try to keep you or or anything of that oh, matter? Yes. Oh, yes, absolutely. Um, I actually met with the owner of the company, the CEO. I met with a lot of people because it was just like, you know, our goals. I don't want to say golden girl, but, you know, somebody that we, you know, really admire and the team, everybody, you know, um, enjoys working alongside. I don't ever say for me. They didn't work for me. I worked alongside with them. Right. Um, that's that's what good leaders do. Um and so, you know, yeah, I talked with all the way, all the way up to the top. I talked to everybody as to why um, I made that decision Don't go. to leave. Don't go. Stay. Yeah. We need you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 But you said it was time to go. So, uh, during that little time off, you uh, did a did a non uh, what you said a nonprofit down in uh, Houston, Texas. Right. Shout, shout out yeah. to Houston, Texas. <laughs> I, I wish. I, well, yeah, I am going to play my little my little drop on that part. But yeah, man, shout out to Houston. That's where the majority of my subscribers come from. What's up, Houston, I love Texas. it. Uh, hey, also, family. Also, shout out to the She Trucking Trucking Group. That's what's up. Um, yeah. Yeah. J- Jerry, you said a friend got you into the trucking industry. So did you get in it by way of getting your CDLs and and getting in the truck and learning how to drive a truck and anything? 
or you got any by way of uh you know the the back end of it like you did with the with the uh the aviation yes it was definitely by way of the back end so um my our, our basketball program um i started a basketball mom organization and it it consisted of like our youth basketball moms but we had collegiate level uh, nba moms uh, nfl moms and so there were it was just a, a sisterhood, uh, very much like the uh, she trucking sisterhood. It's very, very, very similar and aligned. And um, and so in that sisterhood is where I met my girlfriend, um, and she, you know, introduced me. Um, we were just talking one day at lunch or something like that. And I was like, so what do you, you know? Tell me more about what you do and different things like that. And so she is a third party truck driver recruiter. Mm-hmm. And so she introduced me to that, um, that lake and, you know, showed me the road on, um, uh, working and recruiting for the different carriers and things like that. Um, she has her business. Um, I have mine. So we're both, um, we, we have our own businesses, mm-hmm. but we are contract third party recruiters for your major trucking company. Okay, okay, that's what's up. Now let's let's talk about that because there's a lot of there's a lot of you know, excuse me, there's a lot of controversy uh, versus third party recruiters versus mm-hmm. uh, regular recruiters. Now some some of the guys consider me as as like a recruiter, but I'm not. I'm I'm the guy that right. calls the recruiters and talk to them and get the information from the recruiters uh-huh. and then I present it to you know to the to the people that's you know might be interested in the company. Now I got some blowback. Yes, I, I got some blowback mm-hmm. from you know from from the recruiters and I always said, look, if you guys don't have nothing to hide, then it shouldn't be too much of an issue with me presenting uh the information out there. You know what I'm saying? But some recruiters right. are, some recruiters, particularly third party, are not in it. They they only in it just to you know just to fulfill that seat and get their money. Is that true with 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 you? How how do you how do you debunk that? Um, I I'm definitely not in it for um, filling a seat. I'm in it for, and, and and let me just preface by saying you're absolutely right. I do see that um, across the board when it comes to dealing with um, certain recruiters coming in contact with them. It's a it's a numbers game, and you're looking to fill a seat. Okay, mm-hmm. um, my agency, Life on the Road Recruiting, our focus is on what that driver's needs are. Okay. So when I'm talking to you, my conversation is around what are you looking for? Why are you even looking at this time? What's going on? Um, And and to really understand uh, what their situation is and how what I have can potentially help them. And if it doesn't work, I don't, I don't, I don't uh, force a a round, a a square peg through a round hole. Mm -hmm. You follow me? And um, for me and my agency and what I teach, it's around integrity and compassion for the driver. Because everything that I have doesn't fit you, and that's okay, you know? And so I just try to ensure that they know what opportunities are out there Mm -hmm. and then make the best decision that works for you and your family, not for me and my pocket. Okay. What's and I think when you, okay. I think when you operate in that in that mind frame, then the drivers will come to you because they feel as if they trust you, and that's why we're one of the only third party recruiters that have a YouTube channel. And it's because I want you to know me and trust me and be able to, you know, talk about us at the truck stop, at the diner, whatever the case may be. Um, and so, and I'll, I'll kind of go into, we're going to talk about the, the, 
second chance drivers that we help as well because mm. um, that's a big part of my uh, that's a big part of my agency second now, chance now let me ask you this very quick uh, especially about second chance drivers uh, those those will be the drivers that have like uh, like scrimmages on their D uh, on their DAT uh, or DAC DAC report DAC and or drivers that's coming into the industry from you know being maybe incarcerated or anything like that how now let me ask you this how are you how are you Jerry how are you and your company different from from actually calling a regular recruiter to that particular company that you might be recruiting for well, first, you know, I mean, you know, I just keep going back to you're going to get treated like a human. And that's a big thing for me because, first of all, the drivers already get the short end of the stick out there on the road. You know, they can't go in the shipper and use the restroom. During COVID, you had to, um, you know, couldn't find nowhere to eat. Like, you drivers really, really get the short end of the stick. So our number one core value is always give a damn. Like, I'm big on ensuring that we try to do whatever it is that we can to help the driver. Uh, and whether that's, you know, a, a dedicated position, getting them off the road if they want to come local, whether that's, um, you know, helping walk them through. You know, I deal with so many drivers that um, I talk to at least 10 to 20 drivers a day that have had a violation in the clearinghouse. And, that, and it could be just, talking to you and, and letting you know that it's not over, that your career is not over, um, and, and helping you understand the process all the way to trying to see what I got job-wise, um, reaching out to carriers that's willing to hire some of these drivers. And so, again, for me, it's, it's treating them like my brother, like my sister, okay. you know, and, and because I've had, I've dealt with needing a second chance in my family i've dealt with needing a second chance my son had a um you know 18 made a stupid stupid decision and um uh him and and some friends that we didn't even know not nobody he grew up with or anything like that it was a lot it was along the lines of some kids that he was at college with and um they decided to go rob rob one of those cash stores mm. and that changed my whole family's entire life um you know we kind of it, it was it was a really really crazy situation and um we ended up having to get a lawyer and um what happened was he, he ended up getting 10 years of probation mm -hmm. and but the thing that kept him out of the the prison out of the prison and actually serving time mm -hmm. One, he was the getaway driver, which means he it was still no different than everybody right. else that was right. involved. The other the other thing was that we had our lawyer suggested something that we do and, and I'm forever grateful for him and everybody that was involved in, in what we did and he suggested that we put together a uh, uh, album per se mm -hmm. of our son growing up all the way till now with letters with from his counselors from his teachers from right. people in the church and a character almost like a character, character witness right. uh, character uh, album and that let the judge know that look he he has support he made a stupid mistake right and I'm not here to judge anyone and that's the same way that I look at it from my son to the driver because he he got a second chance, you know. And because of the second chance that he got, he's a better father. He's a better mm. son. He wasn't a father then, but mm. he's a father now. And he values every single moment that he's out here. He's a hard worker. He's a better worker on his job, mm. you know. And so it just, that second chance that he got, he will never Shout out. or put his family in that predicament shout like out he. to your son man and congratulations i'm glad everything worked out for him and he was able to he was able to turn a uh 
a bad situation around with the help of his yeah. family. A lot of a lot of people don't yeah. have that right now, but with the help of the family, he was able to turn it around. All right, Jerry, man, uh, what's what's the name of the company again? Uh, what, what is it? Uh, it's it's Life, Life on, the, on the Road Life Recruiting. On, Life yes. on the Road, Life on the road recruiting. recruiting. All right, so being being a recruiter, how how long have you? How long? Let me ask you this: Was you like a you know recruiter first uh, for a company or something like that, or you just up and started Life on the Road Recruiting and then just went from there? No, I just up and started it and ran and ran with it from there. And I kind of looked at, like, uh, it followed, like, what the companies were doing, what other third-party recruiters were doing. Mm-hmm. And I knew I wanted to be different from the standpoint of focusing on the driver and helping the driver find and figure out what's best for him, right. not what's best for me. All right. All right, so man, li- listen here, Jerry. Night, you you say ninety five thousand, ninety five k. That many? I mean, yeah. Clearinghouse just started like yep. like what twenty nineteen twenty twenty January sixth twenty 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 when the Clearinghouse started twenty twenty and ninety five. Thousand drivers has been in violation with clearing house in the yes. past year. Yes. Yes. In the past year, Jerry. I mean, yes. all, 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 all these guys is 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 failing their drug test. I'm I'm just gonna throw it out there, and if I'm right, just hit the bell. They fell in their drug test because of the weed every day. Yes. Oh. For over over fifty percent uh is is due to marijuana. <sighs> is is due to positive um drug screen and marijuana and C B D and that's a lot of that's a whole nother you know, show the CBD because a lot of drivers, they feel like, oh, they sell it at the truck stop and they yeah, sell they it, do. you know, at Walgreens and stuff yeah. like that. I can get it because my back, I got arthritis and all mm-hmm. this other stuff. And the, the answer is no. The answer is no because they they don't label them. They may say that it has a certain amount of THC, but mm-hmm. um, they, they're not regulated. They're not regulated as such where they're really... Um, you know, putting out the mouth is uh, the true amount of the THC on there. So uh, every time I'm talking to a driver, um, it, it, I'm always saying stay away from the CBD. We go to schools and we try to be proactive and get the driver before they get there. But um, there's a ton of drivers that I talk to on a daily basis that have had violations and they don't have zero experience. They just trying to get in the door and 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 have a have a failed drug screen because they didn't know they didn't know how far back they was going to be going and stuff like that so we try to hit the trucking schools up and and educate the new drivers i'm not going to the trucking school to recruit i'm going to the trucking school to tell them hey look you want to be calling me on the back end for me to try to help you a job or you want to you know get clean for you even come in there and take that first pre-employment because sure, sure. that's when they do it that's when it happened. For sure. Now, with that said, uh, I, I know you're in the sheet trucking trucking group, and I know you see some of yes, these. Yes, cra- I'm on the board. I, I know you see some of these crazy at uh, excuse me, crazy behind uh, posts about hey, where can I find a trucking company mm. who's doing n- or who's not doing hair follicles and and stuff like that man i i need to know from from you that's actually you know that's actually working with drivers that that had you know clearing house issues what is your feelings on on posts like that when you actually see them you know i, I just so i have over 60 companies in our that we recruit for mm-hmm. and of those 60 only three of them do urine 
So mm. it's more and more carriers are moving to hair. Um, the larger ones, your small ones, the mom and pop ones, they're not. Um, but here's what I tell the person that's asking that. It's, it, there, there's usually a reason why they're asking that. Mm. And it's because they can't pass the hair drug test or because it goes back, you know, the hair drug test usually goes back 90 to 120 days. Mm -hmm. um, and I always, when I'm educating drivers, I always try to say, hey, look, try six months. Let it be six months. Don't go if it, if you if it's a chance that you're going to fail that test. Um, but I say to anybody, you got to stay clean because you you driving an 80,000 pound you know, machine, and you need to be lucid. You need to be in your right mind. And you out here playing Russian roulette with your license uh, it, to, to, you know, to potentially fail, fail a drug screen. Because I get the tears. Every day somebody <laughs> call me crying. Every single day. Because here's the thing. They, they, they got, they done messed up big time. And they need that second chance because you know why? It's somebody looking at them, why you can't feed me at home? It's somebody, you know, want to know, look, they are, look, if this was my husband, I'm going to be all in his face. Look, you done did, you did what? You lost your whole, almost lost your whole career over some weed or over, you know what I'm saying? And so it's just, it's, it's very sad, but it's a reality. And I just, when you when you have a violation in that clearinghouse, you go from having 100 job opportunities to probably 10 or 15. Wow. It's, a big, it's a major fall off. But it's and, and most of the time, you out over the road, out a couple weeks at a time, when you probably could have made that same money being home every week or home every other day or something like that. But it's still so what? So a person getting hemmed up on clearinghouse, they have to go through something called a SAP program. I, I want you to uh, talk a little bit about that. And you also said that, uh, you know, what? You know, how can we understand the refusal? Uh, uh, you know, with the, with the refusal in the industry as well.